Hey YouTube, Mad Dog here. Today we've got a surprise on the channel. Got myself a box and another bag. I don't know if you can see what this says. <clears throat> it says TiVo Tarantula. This is my first 3D printer. <clears throat> I've done a little bit of research on this and I think I've got the right entry level model here for us. So we're going to get it unboxed and I'm going to get it assembled and we're going to see if I can make this work. I have seen several reviewers say things like the tarantula is not a good choice for a first time 3D printer because the build is, well, it's got quite a big build, but I, I'm pretty confident that I should be able to get this put together, so let's crack into it. So I went ahead and got the tarantula unboxed. I went through all the parts and referenced it to not only my user manual, but also some guides I saw online to make sure that I did indeed receive everything. There was a, when you open your printer, small sheet of paper in there that uh, actually gave you some instructions on what to do if in fact you are missing anything. It looks like within seven days they will ship you um, the missing parts you need, whether that's a small screw or something. Um, hopefully not anything bigger than that. Uh, but also, after that point, um, they would still be willing to ship you the stuff to help you out, but it wouldn't be free anymore um, after the seven days. So make sure you get your box cracked open, and you make sure you got everything right away, even if you're not planning on building it that day. Okay, guys. So we have the tarantula together here. It ended up taking me about eight hours. The video didn't come out of me putting it together. I'm sorry about that. Some things to note. These corner locations, bottom left and bottom right, have these little metal brackets. Um, those are in the pictures on the instructions, but they're not actually in the instructions. So you need to make sure to get those put in. Uh, the first time, you don't want to take it back apart to, to fix it because it is kind of hard to get your fingers in there. Uh, right off the bat, some things that I've done to it. I went ahead and put a piece of glass down um, just to give me a little better print surface and to prevent me from scratching up the original surface. I did make a calibration cube so you guys can see it. Grab my calipers here. supposed to be 20 by 20 looks like 20.01 there I hope you can see it and twenty point oh one there so it's it did an incredibly good job right out of the box this is with zero additions other than the, the glass I'm really happy with the TiVo Tarantula. It ended up being a pretty reasonable build for a first time 3D print build. Um, I'd never done one of these before, so um, the hiccups I hit were, were definitely fair and I was able to get it working. The quality of the 3D prints has just been amazing. Everything has come out great. I did want to mention that I went ahead and flashed it with the latest Marlin firmware and followed Marlin, the Marlin instructions uh, to get it printing in the center of the bed. Uh, some interesting things when that happened. I did notice that the printer runs slightly quieter and possibly even faster so I'm pretty happy about that. It certainly homes faster if nothing else. I have been solely printing from SD card. I see a lot of people mentioning that the default SD card is no good and that you should immediately go out and replace that. Uh, so I did in fact go out and buy another SD card. I bought a SanDisk Ultra Plus. Uh, literally they just had one of these at Walmart. It was relatively cheap. I think I gave about nine bucks for it. Um, it is 16 gigs in size. 
I've also seen people say that you got to be less than 8 gigs. The card that came with my Tarantula was an 8 gig card. This works just fine. I will say the stock card they gave me also works just fine. I'm printing off of it right now. I've not seen any errors, any confusion by the device. It seems to be working perfectly. So I'm pretty happy with that. I will mention one of the things I printed off early was a stand was a uh, filament mount that mounted right here on the side of the tarantula and I decided not to use this for a couple reasons mostly because it was bending and I just broke it there but uh, I should have probably printed it um, with a little more infill there was not there was no infill instructions uh, on the download I had, so I thought it would be fine. It was not. Secondly, I thought that it would be pulling slightly on my printer, and even with the extra support I've got, I just wanted it to be as little as possible, so I went ahead and printed off a different style of mount, or a different spool holder here. This seems to work just fine and now it's on the board itself. In terms of noise, it's certainly not super quiet even when it's not running. I would say things like the stepper motors are very quiet, these rails super quiet. This always running fan on the board a little noisy. Also the power supply is a little noisy even when it's not running but it actually kicks up as soon as you turn it on to start doing something. Is it a good idea to purchase something like this in 2018? I would say definitely. The options are getting bigger and bigger every day, which is great. But even now, this is a really good starter kit. It taught me a ton about 3D printers and, and how they work and all of the little details to make them work smoothly. It was kind of fun to print off some of the little upgrades and some of the extra uh, adapters and pieces. It, it really made it feel like it was my own. I just went on Thingiverse and found some different stuff and printed it off and then, you know, there's so many options on there. Lots of people are making different mounts and different supports uh, and of course you then you have all your options for colors. So. Every time you look at somebody's Tebow Tarantula build, they're all just a little different. And I, I kind of like that. I mean, this that makes this really mine. I have so far really only been using cheap PLA, I will tell you that. I haven't paid more than $15 per kilogram for a spool yet. Uh, and I haven't found something that doesn't work. Absolutely everything I have been trying has worked out just fine. I've got multiple colors. I haven't even got through them all. I've still got a couple more that I'm going to try out, but they're the same brand as the other cheap stuff I'm running. Given the quality of the the prints with, with this PLA, I probably will not bother buying more expensive stuff for that. I do plan on trying out some ABS a little later, uh, but my build isn't quite ready for that. I want to get some sort of enclosure to keep the heat in. Though, where I have this placed is basically in a closet. So I wonder if maybe I close the door, and if it might have a little better luck. I just won't know until I try something like that out. I do plan on doing a couple more videos on this. I'm certainly going to do an upgrade video and show you all the details of the things that I've changed on my device. I'm also working on some time lapse video of some really cool 3D prints so that you guys get to see this working too. But thanks for coming along guys. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and ask them down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer anything I can. Um, of course, this is my first 3D printer, so I'm learning as I go. I will try to help you guys out as much as I can. If you like this content, please hit the like button below. If you like what we're doing here on the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm going to keep bringing videos to you, and I hope to see you all here next time.